Lesson 2 Covenant Primer Sabbath Afternoon April 3 There must be no withholding on our part of our service or our means if we would fulfill our covenant with God. The purpose of all God's commandments is to reveal man's duty not only to God, but to his fellow man. In this late age of the world's history, we are not, because of the selfishness of our hearts, to question or dispute the right of God to make these requirements, or we will deceive ourselves and rob our souls of the richest blessings of the grace of God. Heart and mind and soul are to be merged in the will of God. Then the covenant, framed from the dictates of infinite wisdom and made binding by the power and authority of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, will be our pleasure. It is enough that he has said that obedience to his statutes and laws is the life and prosperity of his people. The blessings of God's covenant are mutual. God accepts those who will work for his name's glory to make his name a praise in a world of apostasy and idolatry. He will be exalted by his commandment-keeping people that he may make them high above all nations which he hath made in praise and in name and in honor. Deuteronomy chapter 26 verse 19 God's Amazing Grace, page 150 Man gains everything by obeying the covenant-keeping God. God's attributes are imparted to man, enabling him to exercise mercy and compassion. God's covenant assures us of his unchangeable character. It is not enough for us to have a general idea of God's requirements. We must know for ourselves what his requirements and our obligations are. The terms of God's covenant are, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. These are the conditions of life. This do, Christ said, and thou shalt live. Ellen G. White comments in the SDA Bible Commentary, Volume 7, page 932. To the omnipotence of the King of Kings, our covenant-keeping God unites the gentleness and care of a tender shepherd. Nothing can stand in his way. His power is absolute, and it is the pledge of the sure fulfillment of his promises to his people. He can remove all obstructions to the advancement of his work. He has means for the removal of every difficulty that those who serve him and respect the means he employs may be delivered. His goodness and love are infinite, and his covenant is unalterable. In the darkest days, when appearances seem so forbidding, fear not. Have faith in God. He is working out his will, doing all things well in behalf of his people. The strength of those who love and serve him will be renewed day by day. His understanding will be placed at their service, that they may not err in the carrying out of his purposes. Testimonies for the Church Volume 8, pages 10 and 11. Sunday, April 4. Covenant Basics God's people are to be distinguished as a people who serve Him fully, wholeheartedly, taking no honor to themselves, and remembering that by a most solemn covenant they have bound themselves to serve the Lord and Him only. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. Revelation chapter 22 verses 3 and 4 Who are these? God's denominated people, those who on this earth have witnessed to their loyalty. Who are they? those who have kept the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus, those who have owned the Crucified One as their Savior. Our High Calling, page 345. Christ left the world's unfallen, the society of holy angels in the universe of heaven, for he could not be satisfied while humanity was alienated from him. The heavenly merchantman lays aside his royal robe and crown, 
though the prince and commander of all heaven, he takes upon him the garb of humanity and comes to a world that is marred and seared with the curse to seek for the one lost pearl, to seek for man fallen through disobedience. He finds his pearl buried in rubbish. Selfishness encrusts the human heart, and it is bound by the tyranny of Satan. But he lifts the soul out of its darkness to show forth the praises of him who hath called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We are brought into covenant relationship with God and receive pardon and find peace. Jesus finds the pearl of lost humanity and resets it in his own diadem. He would inspire the most sinful, the most debased, with hope. He says, Him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. John chapter 6, verse 37. When a soul finds the Savior, the Savior rejoices as a merchantman that has found his goodly pearl. By his grace he will work upon the soul until it will be like a jewel polished for the heavenly kingdom. That I may know him. Page 84. You must make a daily personal consecration of all to God. You must daily renew your covenant to be His holy and forever. Place no dependence upon changeable feelings, but plant your feet upon the sure platform of the promises of God. Thou hast said it, I believe the promise. This is an intelligent faith. Your feelings will be troubled as you see some pursuing a course contrary to the principles of Christ. Trials and tests of faith will come to you, but I entreat you to look only to Jesus and allow none of these things to harden your heart or to cause darkness or unbelief. Let nothing cause your faith to fail. Live as in the sight of God. Talk with Jesus as you would speak with a friend. He is ready to help you in the sorest trial. He is with you in the gravest perplexity. Our High Calling, page 124. Monday, April 5. Covenant with Noah. More than 100 years before the flood, the Lord sent an angel to faithful Noah to make known to him that he would no longer have mercy upon the corrupt race, but he would not have them ignorant of his design. He would instruct Noah and make him a faithful preacher to warn the world of its coming destruction, that the inhabitants of the earth might be left without excuse. Noah was to preach to the people and also to prepare an ark as God should direct him for the saving of himself and family. He was not only to preach, but his example in building the ark was to convince all that he believed what he preached. The Story of Redemption, page 62. Noah had faithfully followed the instructions which he had received from God. The ark was finished in every part as the Lord had directed, and was stored with food for man and beast. God commanded Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Noah's warnings had been rejected by the world, but his influence and example resulted in blessings to his family. As a reward for his faithfulness and integrity, God saved all the members of his family with him. What encouragement to parental fidelity! Patriarchs and Prophets, pages 97 and 98 God has always given men warning of coming judgments. Those who had faith in his message for their time and who acted out their faith in obedience to his commandments escaped the judgments that fell upon the disobedient and unbelieving. The word came to Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me. Noah obeyed and was saved. So Christ's disciples were given warning of the destruction of Jerusalem. Those who watched for the sign of the coming ruin and fled from the city escaped the destruction. So now we are given warning of Christ's second coming and of the destruction to fall upon the world. Those who heed the warning will be saved. 
The Desire of Ages, page 634. True faith lays hold of and claims the promised blessing before it is realized and felt. We must send up our petitions in faith within the second veil and let our faith take hold of the promised blessing and claim it as ours. We are then to believe that we receive the blessing because our faith has hold of it, and according to the word, it is ours. What things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Mark chapter 11 verse 24. Here is faith, naked faith, to believe that we receive the blessing even before we realize it. When thick clouds of darkness seem to hover over the mind, then is the time to let living faith pierce the darkness and scatter the clouds. True faith rests on the promises contained in the Word of God, and those only who obey that Word can claim its glorious promises. Early Writings, page 72 Tuesday, April 6 The Covenant with Abram God had chosen Israel. He had called them to preserve among men the knowledge of his law and of the symbols and prophecies that pointed to the Savior. He desired them to be as wells of salvation to the world. What Abraham was in the land of his sojourn, what Joseph was in Egypt, and Daniel in the courts of Babylon, the Hebrew people were to be among the nations. They were to reveal God to men. In the call of Abraham, the Lord had said, I will bless thee, and thou shalt be a blessing, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Genesis chapter 12, verses 2 and 3. The same teaching was repeated through the prophets. Even after Israel had been wasted by war and captivity, the promise was theirs. The remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many people as a dew from the Lord, as the showers upon the grass, that tarrieth not for man, nor waiteth for the sons of men. Micah chapter 5 verse 7 The Desire of Ages, page 27 the field of the controversy between Christ and Satan, the field on which the plan of redemption is wrought out, is the lesson book of the universe. Because Abraham had shown a lack of faith in God's promises, Satan had accused him before the angels and before God of having failed to comply with the conditions of the covenant and as unworthy of its blessings. God desired to prove the loyalty of his servant before all heaven to demonstrate that nothing less than perfect obedience can be accepted and to open more fully before them the plan of salvation. The trial was far more severe than that which had been brought upon Adam. Compliance with the prohibition laid upon our first parents involved no suffering, but the command to Abraham demanded the most agonizing sacrifice. All heaven beheld with wonder and admiration Abraham's unfaltering obedience. All heaven applauded his fidelity. Satan's accusations were shown to be false. God declared to his servant, now I know that thou fearest God, notwithstanding Satan's charges, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. God's covenant, confirmed to Abraham by an oath before the intelligences of other worlds, testified that obedience will be rewarded. Patriarchs and Prophets, pages 154 and 155. When God chose Abraham as a representative of his truth, he took him out of his country and away from his kindred and set him apart. He desired to mold him after his own model. He desired to teach him according to his own plan. The mold of the world's teachers was not to be upon him. He was to be taught how to command his children and his household after him, to keep the way of the Lord, to do justice and judgment. This is the work that God would have us do. He would have us understand how to govern our families, how to control our children, how to command our households to keep the way of the Lord. Selected Messages, Book 1, page 409 Wednesday, April 7 The Covenant with Moses 
Some of the Israelites were careful to instruct their children in the law of God, but many had witnessed so much idolatry that they had confused ideas of God's law. Those who feared God cried to Him in anguish of spirit to break their yoke of grievous bondage and bring them from the land of their captivity that they might be free to serve Him. God heard their cries and raised up Moses as His instrument to accomplish the deliverance of His people. The Story of Redemption, page 147 Not alone at the Savior's advent, but through all the ages after the fall and the promise of redemption, God was in Christ reconciling the world unto Himself. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19 Christ was the foundation and center of the sacrificial system in both the patriarchal and the Jewish age. It was the Son of God that gave to our first parents the promise of redemption. It was He who revealed Himself to the patriarchs. Adam, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Moses understood the gospel. They looked for salvation through man's substitute and surety. These holy men of old held communion with the Savior who was to come to our world in human flesh, and some of them talked with Christ and heavenly angels face to face. Christ was not only the leader of the Hebrews in the wilderness, the angel in whom was the name of Jehovah and who, veiled in the cloudy pillar, went before the host, but it was he who gave the law to Israel. Amid the awful glory of Sinai, Christ declared in the hearing of all the people the ten precepts of his Father's law. It was he who gave to Moses the law engraved upon the tables of stone. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 366 Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Exodus chapter 19, verse 5. This pledge was given not only to Israel, but to all who are obedient to God's word. God is faithful, by whom we are called to fellowship with his Son. As men and women cooperate with God in doing the work He has given them, they go forward from strength to greater strength. As they exercise simple faith, believing day by day that God will not fail to establish them in Christ, God says to them as He did to ancient Israel, Thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. Thus God is able and willing to lead all who will be led. He desires to teach each one a lesson of constant trust, unwavering faith, and unquestioning submission. He says to each one, I am the Lord thy God. Walk with me, and I will fill thy path with light. Our High Calling, page 24 Thursday, April 8 The New Covenant Under the New Covenant, the conditions by which eternal life may be gained are the same as under the Old. Perfect Obedience under the Old Covenant, there were many offenses of a daring, presumptuous character for which there was no atonement specified by law. In the New and Better Covenant, Christ has fulfilled the law for the transgressors of law if they receive Him by faith as a personal Savior. Mercy and forgiveness are the reward of all who come to Christ, trusting in His merits to take away their sins. In the Better Covenant, we are cleansed from sin by the blood of Christ. The sinner is helpless to atone for one sin. The power is in Christ's free gift, a promise appreciated by those only who are sensible of their sins and who forsake their sins and cast their helpless souls upon Christ, the sin-pardoning Savior. He will put into their hearts His perfect law, which is holy and just and good. Romans chapter 7, verse 12 the law of God's own nature. That I may know him, page 299.
In the Bible, the sacred and enduring character of the relation that exists between Christ and His Church is represented by the union of marriage. The Lord has joined His people to Himself by a solemn covenant, He promising to be their God and they pledging themselves to be His and His alone. He declares, I will betroth thee unto me forever. Yea, I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness and in judgment and in loving kindness and in mercies. Hosea chapter 2 verse 19. The Great Controversy, page 381. There is an earnest work of preparation to be done by Seventh-day Adventists if they would stand firm in the trying experiences just before them. If they remain true to God in the confusion and temptation of the last days, they must seek the Lord in humility of heart for wisdom to resist the deceptions of the enemy. Ever are we to keep in mind the solemn thought of the Lord's soon return, and in view of this to recognize the individual work to be done. Through the aid of the Holy Spirit, we are to resist natural inclinations and tendencies to wrong, and weed out of the life every unchristlike element. Thus we shall prepare our hearts for the reception of God's blessing, which will impart to us grace and bring us into harmony with the faith of Jesus. At this time, a living testimony is to be born in the lives of God's professing people so that the world may see that in this age, when evil reigns on every side, there is yet a people who are laying aside their will and are seeking to do God's will, a people in whose hearts and lives the law of God is written. There are strong temptations before us, sharp tests. The commandment-keeping people of God are to prepare for this time of trial by obtaining a deeper experience in the things of God and a practical knowledge of the righteousness of Christ. Not to unbelievers only, but to church members the words are spoken, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 6. In heavenly places, page 347. For further reading, My Life Today, Not One Word of His Promise Has Failed, page 337, and Patriarchs and Prophets, Abraham and Canaan, pages 132 to 138.